Three quarters of Americans believe that President Biden is too old to govern effectively. President Trump faces multiple civil and criminal trials. Both of them have favorability ratings that are deep in negative territory. That's what two-party politics has given us. And that's why we need to pry loose from the hammerlock of the corrupt powers in Washington, D.C. and make this nation ours again. But there's a sacrifice that everyone, including myself, have to make if we're going to reunite America. We're going to have to surrender the kind of political addiction that is ultimately at the root of all of these divisions. And that's the addiction to taking sides. Our nation's renewal is going to begin when we start to treat each other with respect. Only then will we be able to step outside our tired, stuck debates. We can ask the questions then that nobody thought to ask. We can discover solutions that were right in front of our face. We will listen not just to the other side, but to those who are apart from any side. In a two-sided conflict, both parties have a kind of mutual dependency. Each side depends on the other to define themselves as good guys in contrast to the other side, who, of course, are the bad guys. Well, if you're a team good, then you'll do anything, no matter how unscrupulous, to defeat team evil. And that's why we've seen both parties sacrificing their core values and the, and the foundational canons of democracy in an all-out power for, power for, in an all-out struggle for power. In a war against evil, any means justifies the end. The result is that we ourselves become evil if we participate in that battle. The child who is obsessed with hating a parent becomes that parent. As I've surrendered my attachment to taking sides over the past six months, I've been able to listen with new ears to people with whom I disagree and to see solutions that would otherwise have been invisible. I'll give you an example. Six months ago, I thought that an open border was a humanitarian policy and that sealing, the, if you were for sealing the border, it meant that you were probably a xenophobe and maybe a racist. I was wrong. How did I learn I was wrong? It wasn't just that I listened. It, it wasn't just that I listened to the other side. It was when I actually visited the border and listened to people who weren't on either side. My views changed as I spoke to Border Patrol officers, to local officials, to local sheriffs, to aid workers, and to the migrants themselves. I saw that no one party has a monopoly on wisdom, and none of the simplistic narratives actually contain the whole truth. My promise to you as president is that I'm going to do this on every issue. I'm going to listen to the stakeholders. <laughs> I'm going to listen to the stakeholders from every side and beyond any side. I'm going to uphold my moral convictions, of course, absolutely. But I'll hold my own opinions lightly. I'll look at the evidence and the arguments and I'll choose not the easy path, not the established path, but the right path. In making an independent run for president, I take inspiration from the one other president who, who did not have a political party. And that president was George Washington. And his, in his farewell address, Washington issued a prescient warning about the disastrous potential of party politics. Inevitably, he said, political parties will be taken over by a cunning, ambitious, 
unprincipled minority who will serve the interests of the party rather than the interests of the nation and usurp for themselves the reins of government. Washington's dire prediction has certainly come true. I intend to wrest the reins of both parties and return power to the American people.